الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على أفضلهم وخاتم النبيين محمد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبع Brother Chairman our distinguished fellow panelist Dr. Omar Zaid uh, whose presentation I was looking forward to listening to for a long time and he's not disappointed me brothers and sisters sons and daughters and I also have two grandsons here and perhaps a future son-in-law as well Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh An introduction to Islamic eschatology and how do we link it to the presentation on the occult on the secret societies on the symbolism which symbolizes so much evil Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the very beginning of Surah Al-Hadid of the Quran the Surah entitled Iron and Steel he says بعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم هو الأول والآخر وزاخر والباطن إلى آخر الآية he is the first and the last and that which is manifest and also that which is hidden indicating that if we are to penetrate truth for he is truth he is al-haq if we are to penetrate truth and if we are to penetrate truth as it moves in the historical process it cannot be a part-time piecemeal effort you got to link the beginning with the end and you got to link that which is outside with that which is hidden and what Islamic eschatology does is precisely to link the beginning with the end and to link the external with the internal is not an, e an easy subject you need a multi-disciplinary scholarship to handle Islamic eschatology or ilmu akhiru zaman because the end cannot be understood without reference to the beginning in the 35 30 minutes that I want to take with you I want to show you how this is done it is not possible it was not possible for those who were there at the time of the beginning at the time of the first shower who were the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam it was not possible for them to be able to encompass the totality of knowledge which was communicated by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in the Quran and by Nabi Muhammad Alaihi Salatu Wasalam many of whose ahadith pertain also to that which is hidden and that which comes at the end but we who live in the end times we have no excuse we have a job to do that they could not do and this is not because of any deficiency on their part but because of an unavailability of the data that you need and so if your methodology is that knowledge comes only from the Quran and from the Hadith 
and from the early the Aslaf and you will not accept any knowledge of Islam which comes after that we say to you we said we'll be moving on we can't stay with you we're moving on no bad feelings no need for boxing gloves ours is a, a different methodology from yours we're not throwing stones at you but we are warning that you judge a tree by the fruit which it produces and if our methodology can explain the reality of the world today it will validate our effort here is a stunning example of the link between al awwal and an akhir with which Islamic eschatology is concerned at the very beginning of religion and of course religion began with Ibrahim alayhi salam Milla to Ibrahim the religion of Ibrahim alayhi salam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent to him a vision and then he came to his son Ismail alayhi salam there's no doubt about that that it was Ismail alayhi salam Ya Bunayya O oh my son Inni ara fil manami anni azbahuk I have surely seen in my sleep in a vision Ru'ya That I must sacrifice you Fanzur maza tara Son How do you respond? Do you agree to this sacrifice? <coughs> Ya abatif al ma tu'mar Oh my father Go ahead Do as you have been ordered Meaning We both recognize that this is from Allah I agree to the sacrifice I hope Egypt is listening today I hope the Arabs are listening today I hope those who have come from Ismail alayhi salam are listening today. For Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam said, The best of those who came from Ismail alayhi salam are the Kinana. And the best of those who came from the Kinana are the Quraysh. And the best of the Quraysh are Banu Hashim. And I am the best of Banu Hashim. In other words, declaring the line that the Arabs have come from Ismail alayhi salam. And so he said, Ya, ab ya abati fa'al ma tu'mar. Oh my father, go ahead. Go ahead. I accept the sacrifice. But when Ibrahim alayhi salam, and I don't know what is in his heart, if we meet him one day, inshallah, we can ask him. There could be far more to what he did than what we understand. When he put his son's head on the block to sacrifice it, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called out to him, Ya Ibrahim, by name, eh? Ya Ibrahim, Qad Sadaqta Ru'ya You have already accepted, submitted, fulfilled the vision. What I've asked of you, what I've asked of you did not require that you take a knife and cut the throat of your son. No, that was not what I asked of you. What I've asked of you has already been accepted and has already been fulfilled what could it be if al awwal is linked with al akhir then this sacrifice this vision of sacrifice of Ibra the son of ibrahim alayhi salam ismail alayhi salam from whom the arabs have come it could mean and allah knows best 
that this is a communication at the very beginning of an event that is to take place at the end the sacrifice of the Arabs and the Arabs today are being prop are being prepared for that moment of sacrifice which is coming how can we stand up here and say that the Arabs are going to be sacrificed in a momentous sacrifice when all the indicators are to the opposite that this is the Arab Spring the winter is gone dictatorship is gone persecution and oppression is gone and we are now free once again and Islam the religion is rising once again and we will triumph over those who have been oppressing us and waging war on Islam. That is the external. And we are saying that the internal is different. Time will tell. And we don't have long to wait. To know whether or not this is a valid thesis or hypothesis. We don't have long again to wait. That there is a momentous sacrifice of the Arabs which is coming. And Ibrahim salam saw it, knew it was going to come. His seed, his progeny, from this son, and he accepted it. And Ismail salam knew also that this is what's going to come, and he also accepted it. And so next Sunday, when we sacrifice our animals, and don't tell me you're going to write a check. Not even the pagan Arabs who worship idols made of wood and stone would ever do such an act of profound disrespect and disregard for the Sunnah of Ibrahim salam as to write a check. No, they sacrifice the animal with their own hands. And when they sacrificed the animals with their own hands and there was blood on their hands and blood in their clothing, then Allah spoke to them and said, it is not this which will read Allah. It is not this blood and flesh of the animals which will reach Allah. But where is the blood today? I don't see any blood on a check. It is the piety in your hearts that will reach Allah. Is there a great sacrifice of the Arabs that is coming? <clears throat> Seven months ago, six months ago, when I gave my lecture at the University of Malaya, an Islamic view of the current Arab uprisings, <coughs> I laid down the hypothesis there that this is the preparation for the great slaughter. That what the enemy is planning is to be able to say to the world that Islam is rising again. And so when the Tunisian elections, when the recent Tunisian elections delivered to the Islamic party victory, and when the elections in Egypt, which are to be due next month, I believe, delivers predictably so victory to the Islamic parties. And when the domino effect takes place around the Arab world, and when the call for the enforcement of Sharia finds roots, then Israel will be able to say, and all the media that supports Israel will be able to say, Islam is now rising again, posing a threat not only to Israel, but posing a threat to the world, posing a threat to mankind, demonizing Islam, painting Islam as a menace and hence establishing justification for the great wars which have already been planned with which Israel will be able to expand her territorial frontiers but we know that subject already from my book Jerusalem and the Quran and set a trap for the United States so the United States will be facing military defeat is not just the collapse of the US dollar and collapse of the US economy but more than that for Israel to replace the United States. Hmm? 
But we have a question and answer session where we can elaborate on that. But from the time we ask the question why would Israel want to do these things? And we get the answer that Israel wants to rule the world. But when they said in Europe that all that we want to do is to provide a home for the Jewish people. And they issued the Balfour Declaration in 1917. We say that was a lie. We are now accustomed to your lies. You are a people who tell monstrous lies. And truth does not reside in the heart of those from whose lips lies constantly emerge. Even a schoolboy would understand that. What you wanted to do was to create a state that would rule the world. And Israel is just a few steps away from that. Israel cannot rule the world, however, unless it first establishes its political and economic dominion over the Arab world. How can we explain this without reference to Dajjal. How can we explain this without reference to Gog and Magog, Ya'juj and Majuj, which are major signs of Akhiru Zaman. And yet our critics are emphatic that no, Dajjal has not been released. Gog and Magog have not been released. If we can't find a barrier built by Zulkarnay, which is made of iron and steel, it's probably somewhere down a few miles underneath the earth. Is that scholarship? We do not want to disrespect our critics. But we say, if you are not prepared to accept that the Dajjal is the mastermind of the modern age, and that Gog and Magog are the means through which the Jal pursues his mission on the earth. Then we're very sorry, we're moving on. We can't wait on you. From the time you turn to the Jal, you turn to the internal knowledge, to the occult. And you also turn to the importance of symbolism, which is where Dr. Omar Zaid is so precious to us because he's done the research that we could not do and may Allah bless him to continue with that research but these two have to be brought together the first and the last the outer and the inner an example of symbolism and it's there in the hadith and from the time I'm finished the questions are going to be posed to Dr. Zaid I know right away Dajjal sees with his left eye. He's blind in the right eye. It looks like a bulging grip. Can you imagine the number of questions that are going to come now? <laughs> the doctor said. Between his eyes on his forehead is written the word kafir. And every mu'min will be able to read it whether he is kaatib, literate, or ghayru kaatib, illiterate. I leave that symbol with you. Back to the slaughter. We say that the Arabs are being prepared for a great slaughter. Is there anything else beside that vision of Ibrahim alayhi salam to support this thesis? Yes, there is. Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam was asleep at the home of his wife Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha and he woke up from his sleep when the hadith is located in Sahih Bukhari 
in several different versions from several different sources companions so we say it is mutawatir he woke up from his sleep what he had seen in his sleep also a vision like Ibrahim alayhi salam was so terrible so terrible that his face was red flushed red it has to be something terrible for the Prophet of Allah to wake up with his face all red flushed red what did he see he woke up and he spoke these memorable lines he said Oh unto the Arabs because of an evil shar, an evil it can't be an ordinary evil for his face to be so flush red it has to be a very great evil which is now close and then he raised his hands like this and he said today <coughs> today means this day or 1000 years from now where has reason fled he said today a hole has been made in the radam he didn't use the word sad he used the word radam Surah Al-Kaf has both the words. When they ask Zulkarnain to build it, they use the word Sad. When he built it, he used the word Radam. And the Hadith says the Radam of Zulkarnain, of Yajuj and Majuj. Today, a hole has been made, indicating that the great evil, which is going to devastate the Arabs, has not as yet occurred it is an end time event because the words Gog and Magog are there what is this great catastrophe that is coming on the Arabs what is this great destruction that is coming on the Arabs which has not as yet come where is Islamic scholarship today why are you not asking these questions and I'm not asking the Malay ulama. I'm not asking the Indonesian ulama. I'm asking the Arab ulama. She asked, Who? Zainab. Radiallahu ta'ala anha. Anuhlika. Will we be destroyed? Anuhlika. Halaka. To destroy. Huh? will we be destroyed this is the word she asked will we the arabs be destroyed when there are righteous people amongst us the hadith is in sahih bukhari he said naam yes and then he went on to use words i never understood until recently until i saw the pathetic state of Islamic scholarship today and the even pathetic state of those who lead Muslims today he said either al khabath when the scum prevails then it will come and today the scum prevails they have eyes and yet they cannot see they have ears and yet they cannot hear they have hearts and yet they do not understand they're worse than cattle they are the scum and when the scum prevails then the destruction of the Arabs not the Malay not the Turks the Arabs will take place we have something more than that with which we should be looking again at Al Jazeera and CNN and reading the newspapers. <coughs> Doctor said, I don't have a television set in my home and I don't buy the newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, you have my blessing. I sleep, I sleep peacefully at night. I sleep peacefully at night. <laughs> yes. No television. 
and no newspapers and I sleep peacefully and my food can digest alhamdulillah <laughs> he said and the hadith is in Tirmizi in Ibn Majah Abdullah Ibn Amr reported that the messenger of Allah said there will come a calamity which will wipe out the Arabs and their slain will be in hell and at that time the tongue will be more severe in this than the blow of a sword Al Jazeera is more powerful than a cruise missile yes. CNN is more powerful than a helicopter gunship yeah the information media will be far more powerful than a sword he said there will be civil strife which will render people deaf dumb blind regarding what is right how can we explain they say we are mujahideen in libya they say he was a dictator muammar Gaddafi. they say we have the right to rise up against the oppressor and yet these dumb and deaf and blind chose to make an alliance with NATO the Zionist NATO with which the Turkish Prime Minister is still comfortable I've never heard the Turkish Prime Minister say that he's anyway discomforted with Turkey's participation in NATO I invite him to respond how can you make an alliance that Allah has prohibited are you not aware of the Quran in which Allah prohibited ba'aduhum awliya ubad that when the Christian Jewish Zionist alliance emerges you are prohibited from being friends and allies of such people woe unto the Arabs the hadith is in Abu Dawood woe unto the Arabs because of an evil which is growing, drawing close the shadow has fallen on the Lord of the Kaaba the shadow has fallen on them by the Lord of the Kaaba his shadow has fallen upon them said Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam these are a hadith pertaining to the destruction of the Arabs which if we are correct is now at hand not long from now so we don't have long to wait to determine whether our methodology is correct and validated or wrong and invalidated just wait and see before we end, we still have another one minute. The Quran actually begins with a warning. Yes. 20 verses of the Quran at the beginning of Surah Al Baqarah, at the very beginning, which are devoted to three kinds of people. Five of the 20, the believers. Two of the 20, those who reject the faith, the kuffar five and two make seven so thirteen left, that's a lot who are those for whom thirteen verses are allocated Allah speaks of a people who declare we are Christians, we are Jews, we are people who believe in Allah on the last day but Allah says no they are not they are not they have trademarks their trademark is deception when it is said to them do not cause facade on earth they say no we are the peacemakers you are familiar with that aren't you when it is said to them believe in the way these believers believe they look down upon us and say these are sufaha we are the civilized people we are the civilized people we have the burden of civilizing these natives but then the Quran goes on to say when they are with those who have faith they say but we have faith like you وَإِذَا لَكُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ There you are, Dr. Zaid. But when they are with their shayateen, 
Allah is giving you a very, very, very big hint here that these are a people with links to the occult world. These are a people with links to the jinn who are shayateen. Qalu inna ma'akum inna ma nahnu mustahzi'un. And so the Quran is telling you to pay attention to that branch of knowledge to which we were just introduced this morning by Dr. Zaid. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may bless those <coughs> who now devote attention to the subject of Islamic eschatology, ilmu akhiru zaman, and that Allah may open our hearts that we might understand and penetrate that which is in the Quran and that which is in the word of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam rabbana taqabbal minna inna ka anta samir alim wa taba alayna ya mulana inna ka anta tawab rahim bi rahmatika ya arhma rahimin ameen there are ten major signs I didn't use the word major because I don't see anything minor about the other ones <laughs> of the last day uh, and they're not given in the chronological sequence in which they will occur <coughs> we don't know that sequence number one Dajjal, number two Gog and Magog, number three help me Kish number three the, the return of the son of Mary Mirza Ghulam Ahmad was the son of a Punjabi woman <laughs> number four Dukhan Number five, the Batul Ard. Number six, the sun will rise from Taman Sri, UK. <laughs> the sun will rise from the west. Seven, eight, and nine, the three sinkings of the earth. The one in the east, one in the west, one in Arabia. And number ten, that's the question. That a fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to their place of assembly or hashab. You can stick to that methodology and look for a fire that can be extinguished with water. Or you can recognize the word fire here to be symbolic, representing, for example, a revolutionary fire. And if it's going to the place of assembly, which is Arafat, it's goodbye Saudi Arabia. Goodbye. Saudi Arabia. Uh, I don't think we are now here in that. We still have quite some time to go before that can occur. Many people have asked, Sheikh Imran, how come you're still alive? Uh, you preach Islam the way that you do, how come you're still alive? Answer, had I been an Arab, I'll be long ago disposed of because I'm not an Arab because I'm not an Arab they have not as yet attacked me to eliminate me to silence me yeah. the primary target of the state of Israel because of Dajjal is Arabs I, I mentioned it in my talk in order for Israel to make a claim to rule the world so that Pax Judaica might replace Pax Americana and there should be some credibility to that claim Israel must first establish firmly establish its political and economic dominion over the Arabs I did say that in my talk so the rest of the Arab world I'm sorry the rest of the Muslim world is only of peripheral importance to, to, to Israel it is the Arab world which is of primary importance and that is why the attack will be on the Arabs. I, want, I, I noticed some very glum faces amongst those of us here who are Arabs. <laughs> some very glum faces. Yes, so, yes. Uh, let me uh, offer a comforting word. I don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and that is that 
the destruction of the Arabs should not be uh, summarily uh, explained as divine punishment. There is certainly a part of punishment in it, but that's not just for the Arabs. It appears to me, and Allah knows best, that this is part of a divine planning. Yes. The, the, <laughs> the believers who are struggling. I got an email from Palestine <coughs> yesterday, yesterday, and he was roaring and raving and saying why 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 must we suffer more shall we've suffered so much already and you are telling us that there is even greater suffering to come if you read that email you'd weep yeah this is part of the divine planning that you will not suffer anything for Allah's sake but that you'll be rewarded. So today, there are tears. Tomorrow, you will smile. Mm -hmm. So, yes, there is a divinely ordained destruction of the Arabs which is coming. But that should not cause despair to yeah. set in. Rather, it should cause our hearts to bow in submission before the divine wisdom that in order for a greater good to be accomplished what is that greater good what is listen to this ayah and you will fill your heart with joy what is ta'azzana rabbuka what is ta'azzana rabbuka layabathanna alayhim إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوَ الْعَذَابِ And your Lord has announced that He is now sending against them those who will inflict upon them continuously until the last day the worst possible punishment. That worst possible punishment was described in such a few words by Nabi Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam hadith of Sahih Bukhari لَتُقَاتِلُنَّ الْيَهُودِ You will most certainly fight the Jews and of course if you use a lazy man's defective methodology you will say the Prophet is speaking about all Jews oh no that's foolishness you don't <laughs> you, don't, you don't develop scholarship like that no no He's not speaking about all Jews. You will most certainly fight the Jews. And you will most certainly defeat them. At that time even the stones will speak. But before the stones speak, we have to suffer. We have to suffer. Hatta yakulul hajar. On that time, the stones will speak. Ya Muslim, as a Yahudi yun wara ifata ala faktul. There's a Jew hiding behind me. So tomorrow they'll be on the run. Today they're stamping their feet with such arrogance upon the earth, and inflicting such horrible oppression, and using deception to corrupt the world. But tomorrow they'll be on the run and hiding behind trees and stones. But tomorrow even the trees and stones will speak and say, come and kill him. Hmm? Once upon a time, when you had freedom in the United States, I gave a lecture at the State University of New York in Stony Brook. Wow. The Jews were sitting right in front of me. <laughs> and I quoted the studies. <laughs> That was before 9-11. And they went to the rector, the vice-chancellor, and they complained against me. 
Yeah. And he's inciting the Jews to be killed. Mm -hmm. And our response was, if we don't have the freedom to quote the Quran and to quote the Hadith, do please tell us in this your United States of America. The Vice Chancellor could do nothing. He never even bothered to contact me. Hmm? So before this could come, this great triumph, I'm going to send against them. إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ مَنْ يَسُومُهُمْ سُوحَ الْعَذَابِ I am going to send against them those who will inflict upon them continuously until the last day the greatest possible punishment. Before this can take place, in order for this to take place, he sent that vision to Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam. You must sacrifice your son. Are you prepared for that sacrifice? So Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam was, yes, I'm prepared for it. And Nabi Ismail alayhi salam said, yes, I'm prepared for it. And so the Arabs must also be prepared for it. The purpose of the Crusades is twofold. One uh, was a magical uh, purpose. There was something that they were searching for, uh, and two was a political purpose. The Catholic Church uh, at that particular time, uh, it didn't really become fully Catholic until about the ninth century. It was losing its political grasp uh, uh, on the thrones of Europe. And uh, this was a very uh, nasty time to be a European. Um, uh, so. They decided they were going to unify Europe under the Pope uh, by carrying out these crusades. Uh, and this, mm, this uh, cemented uh, a new era which then lasted for almost a thousand years uh, of the papal, well, 700 years or so, uh, until the revolution, until the uh, uh, reformation took place. Um, these were the Dark Ages uh, and the opening of the Middle Ages and the, the in some places the beginning of the um, what they call the, the Renaissance in, in some areas. The papal powers uh, wanted to consolidate their power. And now when I say papal powers, what do I mean? I mean certain families that wanted to rule not just Italy, but all of Europe, uh, either directly or indirectly, through the office of the papacy, because this was how Nimrud did it in the old uh, Babylonian days, you see. And um, uh, the Pope was sort of, sort, of, sort of a king and priest at the same time. They always sort of, it's a funny mixture, this sort of thing. But, you see, at this particular point, this fellow, Ormesius, long dead, had his disciples, and they had uh, become a, a, a group of secret initiates that had even infiltrated Islam and uh, wrote uh, certain black magical treatises, which eventually found their way to London in the hands of Queen, the first Queen Elizabeth and her uh, fellow uh, Magi, who was a guy who translated it from the Arab to English, and it became known as the Nekomakam. Well, there were books like this, and there were but not so much books as there were artifacts that they wanted. They were after, in particular, they were after the Ark of the Covenant. And the um, Knights Templars went so far as to admit that they couldn't find it in Jerusalem. And uh, they followed the trail that led them all the way down to Aksum in uh, Ethiopia. And there they found something that may have been the Ark. Because, or maybe they found something that was inside the Ark because there are some rather inexplicable dwellings that they left behind that no one to this day can figure out how they carved the exact replica of cathedrals out of rock. I mean, there are cathedrals 
carved into the rock there <coughs> that are every bit as magnificent as what, as what you see in Europe. But this is certainly not done by the hand of man alone. They found something. And whatever they found, we don't know what they found because it's a secret. And they're holding it. They took back to Europe and the king of Ethiopia was so worried about this, he went to Rome to warn the Pope. That was a long journey in those days. He took a, an entourage of about 70 people with him. And they took the time and the trouble to go all the way to Rome. And when the Pope heard about what was taking place and that at certain people under this particular Rosicrucian knighthood, now carrying the Red Cross, had certain artifacts in their possession, he and the King of France went to war against the Templars. And then they became the Freemasons later. There's a big long story. They found something. What they found, we don't know. And it's not really our business to know. If it was, Allah would make it known. You see, I'm not concerned about that. What, what I'm concerned about is the trail, the history that leads, that has led to the present day. These Knights Templars became what is now today the, the Knights of Malta, Salahuddin, um, who's the other fellow? Um, Suleiman the Great, magnificent. They tried, they did their best to wipe them out wherever they found them. They spared all the other Christians except for these fellows because they were magicians. They were just like the witch from Allah. See, he put them to the sword. Suleiman chased them all the way to the Isle of Malta and then he had to withdraw. Okay, couldn't take them down. They became the Knights of Malta after a fashion. And they are now the Knights of Malta today. This is the same group. They have very many branches, they have very many degrees, very many different... There's Constantinian order. Uh, you know, the Arab kings belong to these orders. They belong to these orders. This, this is why judgment is coming. And this is why some of the people are angry. And they have a right to be angry. And they should not submit to such leaders, such leadership. This is the truth. And but it's not the truth that you get you can openly speak about in academic forums or publish on the front page. You see? It won't even it won't even get to the back page. They won't print it. Okay. Now, um, so they found something and the political purpose served because after the Crusades what happened was that the Jews in Italy and the Latin families, which had fled Rome and had all the gold and all the silver, they managed to enslave financially all of the royal thrones, the Celts, the Franks, uh, in, 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 in Europe and in England, who all those Christian kings who had to make a show of it, you know, wear that cross and go get, go get Jerusalem for the good guys. They were all in debt. They all became indebted because nobody can afford to practice that kind of war. I mean, you have to be Kubla Khan to do that. And guess what? They got gold from Kubla Khan because they, after the Crusades, one of the things that they did was they arranged uh, Kubla Khan to get all the gold, bring it to Italy. They uh, exchanged it for silver, then they controlled the gold in the silver markets in Europe. And they got further, further, these people further into that, and it began the first banking system. It all happened from during the Crusades. It's continued to the present day. They established this loaning on Riva at that particular time, and the fractional banking was already done then. See, now it's just more sophisticated, and we're all subject to it, one way or another. Now I've forgotten your second question, but I think the the shake. I'd better handle that. The second question was, uh, is it possible that by that time, when the stones are going to stick, that there be no more 
few is left in the world who would be standing up in opposition to Israel and to its oppression. I think it will be good strategy and wisdom on our part and will be pretty beneficial to us to speak hopefully, speak positively, to recognize that there are Jews in the world today who do stand up to oppression and who do condemn Israel mm -hmm. yeah. and to express the hope that these will continue until that time when Israel is sent back to the garbage bin. Um, I, I just want to add something because the, the name of the city just came to me. It's Venice. Venice. The Venetian Jews, the Venetian Romans, they were not all Jews. Because what happened was, after Alaric sacked Rome, you see what happened was that uh, one of the Roman uh, emperors declared women, all the women in the, the kingdom, in the empire, to be subject to him directly. Not to their fathers, not to their husbands. And after that occurred, God wiped out the Romans and he destroyed Rome and when that happened the Jews and the rich Roman senators who could escape they all escaped to Venice yeah. now that happened about 500 years before the uh, Crusades and that was the period that was really a dark age it was no man's land for the for the most part and so they consolidated their position in Venice because they had all the gold, they had all the silver that was to be had from Rome. They took the riches of Rome to Venice, okay, so that the Huns couldn't get them. You know, they got bits and pieces, but not the, not the majority. The, the, the people, the real Magi, the real Latins who practice human sacrifice and the Jews who practice human sacrifice, and believe me, they do it. Okay. They escaped to Venice, and then there was, there continued to be all sorts of, uh, 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 of struggles between different clubs, different uh, factions, different covens, if you will, vying for power and authority. Venice was one of them, Florence was another one, other areas, but it was out of Venice that this occurred. The Venetians hired uh, the kings to sack Constantinople because the secrets that they wanted destroyed had been transferred by Constantine to Constantinople when the empire became initially divided. That was a uh, few hundred years prior. Yeah. That library had to be destroyed and that's a significant uh, matter. And that's another reason why some of the, the Alexandrian library had to be destroyed as well. Okay, I'll end there. What they, you have to look at a lot of these things as uh, different disinformation. Yes, there are cycles. Um, and yes, these cycles have meaning and they have purpose. But their real meaning and their true purpose has long been lost. And uh, people are uh, sort of dwelling on the negative rather than the positive. For example, in the human being, every seven years we uh, enter a new phase of development from our birth to age seven, and from seven to puberty, and from puberty to 21, and so forth. Uh, and certain things occur during that developmental stage, which are significant. Well, the, the same thing occurs in the Earth, the same thing occurs in the solar system, the same thing occurs in the universe, and there are rhymes, there are rhythms. But the important thing uh, to uh, note here is this cosmology, you know, it has a certain root uh, that you have to ascertain the scriptural basis. And if you don't have a firm uh, foundation in that scriptural basis, don't concern yourself with it. Because then, again, you'll get lost in some sort of particular, which is uh, uh, going to um, be nothing more than disinformation. Uh, something to, to make you anxious, you see. Um, uh, uh, so, uh, I, 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 is it going to occur? Uh, you know, people have asked me, well, you know, 
uh, this Planet X was supposed to hit us last month. So I, somebody asked me that three months ago. Uh, is it going to happen, Doctor? Is it going to happen? And I looked at the author, and I don't know much about Planet X. I looked at it and I said, well, there's some viability here, but I don't know. I'm not an astronomer. It's not my field. But I looked at the origin, and I said, well, this person is not uh, scriptural. This is not halal. And uh, they've been wrong before. <laughs> it's like the same fellow who prophesied the world is going to end or the rapture is going to occur. They're all guessing. This is all false prophecy. This is coming from the mouths of demons. Okay? Oh, but they're human beings. Yeah, but they've been demonized. Their thoughts and their minds and their hearts are controlled by demonic ideations. So, a lot of what has been uh, added in that, if you, if you find yourself surfing around Planet X, surf away. You know, just dump all those websites. It's not going to help you. It, it won't help you understand anything at all. If there is a, a, a firm foundation in Islamic cosmology here, I have to defer to the Sheikh here. I've been so busy tracking these criminals down, I haven't had time to look at it. There, there is something to be expected. Okay, you're, you're, you're correct that, but is it connected with this planetary... I don't know. I cannot say that. But you don't need to follow planetary cycles to be, in order to be... You, you don't need to be an astrologer. You don't need to be uh, Nostradamus. Okay? You don't need to be Joan of Arc. Please, we don't need that kind of approach. You can read the signs. Other times, simply by your scriptural knowledge and by looking clear, clearly at what is occurring now. And you follow the patterns. There are patterns that occur. There are political patterns. There are human patterns. There are historical patterns. Uh, you know, even Calhoun establishes for us that other historians have established there is a cycle, there's a rise, and there's a fall. Right now, some of the rises and falls are occurring a little bit more, uh, a little quicker, quicker, quicker than they would have before. Because everything's accelerated, I think that that's been prophesied as well. Is there something going to happen? You can count on it. Is it going to happen in 2012? Probably there will be a, a, a real global depression. Okay? Uh, 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 something that will make 1933 look like a cakewalk. Okay? Uh, and that's going to happen. Is there going to be some sort of a disaster? You can count on it. Whether it is Allah swallowing Arabia or uh, the earth uh, opening up and finally getting rid of that devil's den in Los Angeles. I don't know. I don't know, but you can count on something happening and maybe there's going to be some sort of nuclear decimation of an entire American city. Maybe New York is going to disappear. Maybe it's going to be incinerated. I don't, but you can count on something bigger than 911 occurring sometime soon. 2012? Maybe, maybe not. The depression's definitely going to happen. So uh, don't don't count on your finances. Get rice in your house, stock up, and if you can run to the mountains like the prophet said, go. I don't think I'm being quoted correctly here. I've never said anything like that. What I have said is that what Harun Yahya has written could have could have very much come out of the Israeli Mossad because of the similarity. Mm because of the similarity and I accuse Harun Yahya and I normally don't call names this is not my style at all but I had to call this name of this I don't know who he is but he parades behind this name Harun Yahya because of the grave danger that I perceived in his book on Imam al-Mahdi and the end times I think he wrote a hundred books in order to be able to put out this one. That was 99 or 95 percent that dazzled the world and here was the poison. To slip in the five percent the poison. Yes. That when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, as Muslims believe that he will return, that the Prophet has prophesied that he will return alayhi salatu was salam that the Jews would believe in him and the Christians would believe in him 
la yu'minanna bihi qabla mawti says the Quran and since the Muslims already believe in him that when Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns according to this fanciful fairyland theory of Harun Yahya Christians, Muslims and Jews are going to embrace each other in a fraternity a wonderful fraternity and since we are going to be having this lovely fraternity of Christians, Muslims and Jews in the end time why should we not do it now? in other words why don't you be friends with Israel? This is false. This is not the correct interpretation of the Quran. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, I, I spoke in a synagogue in New Jersey before 200 Jews. And I quoted this verse of the Quran that when he returns, you will have to believe in him you don't have any choice in the matter and when you do believe in him at that time it will be of no benefit for you for he will give evidence against you and you go into the hellfire I don't know where I got the courage from I, but I still have that courage but when the lecture was over they surrounded me I was surrounded by a whole sea of Jews. Of course, they never invited me again after that. <laughs> but they wanted to know why should we be forced to believe in something that we do not believe in, we reject. And my answer was that at that time, the veils are going to be removed from off your eyes. And in the same way that when he was drowning, you know who I'm talking about, when he was drowning, he realized, I am not God. I am not God. And then he says, I now believe in your God, Banu Israel. Hmm? Similarly, at that time, you also will recognize that what you have been holding on to is falsehood. And what you have rejected, and you have fought against, and you have tyrannized and terrorized and oppressed, that is the truth. So you will now die swallowing your own vomit, and having to accept that which you rejected. And you will pay the price. وَإِن مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ إِلَّا لَيُؤْمِنَنَّ بِهِ قَبْلَ مَوْتِهِ وَيَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ يَكُونُ عَلَيْهِمْ شَهِيدًا And on judgment day, he'll give evidence against you and you'll go into the hellfire. The actual event of the return of Nabi Isa Islam is not a wonderful fraternity, but rather the divine punishment now coming upon those who have rejected the truth and who have stood on the side of the oppressor not all Jews and all, not all Christians are like that no hmm? and so instead of Harun Yahya talking about a wonderful fraternity which is what the Mossad wants he should quote the Hadith at that time the, the stones and the trees will speak you'll never hear Harun Yahya quoting that Hadith no and they say oh Muslim there's a Jew hiding behind me. Come and kill him. I came to a negative opinion of Harun Yahya's work completely on my own. Uh, I never discussed this or this man uh, with the Shem at all until this moment. Until this moment. Knowing what I know from the research and the books that I've written and uh, comparing that with the sensationalism uh, that is manufactured by the uh, Yahya Corporation, nobody can write a hundred books on their own. That's impossible. So he's got a team behind him. You have to look at you, know, you have to look at the facts from an even Calvinian perspective. What is possible? And a big bank account. Yeah, and a big bank account. You know, where did this guy come from? Okay. 
Now, I'll tell you for a fact, um, the present chair of the, uh, the Islamic uh, chair in uh, Alberta, even uh, Professor Ibn al-Rabi, he was here a few, some of you may know of him. He's a, he was the um, editor of the Muslim Journal for 20 years. Uh, Well-respected uh, scholar, in the, uh, in particularly in the Western sense, and he was on a money hunt. He was looking for money for his students, looking for scholarships uh, uh, to promote uh, uh, education. And uh, he went to Harun Yahya's house. And uh, when he was ushered in uh, to the uh, mansion, uh, he was met by uh, a number of very attractive, young, scantily clad uh, ladies uh, this is not an Islamic environment, okay? Um, and uh, even our, even our Rabbi, they, they, he told me this himself face to face when we discussed this man, because I don't discuss Yahya. Uh, I went to Sister Saba's bookstore and I saw his words on the books and I was just introduced to her, so I, I didn't say anything, it was not my place. Um, but I wait, you wait for the opportunity. So the opportunity has now just arisen at this moment. If you've got any material from even uh, from this fellow Yahya, throw it away. Because it's, this has been the tactic. It's just as the Sheikh said. And I found this in my own research. These demons will give you 99% truth and they'll throw in 1% lie. Okay? And that lie will take you to hell. Guaranteed. That's how close they are. What did the uh, the, chef, the the king in Ethiopia say? There's a very thin line, very thin line between us. And he was held back by this thin line. One percent. Jesus is God. Yeah. Okay, I did that. I would like to thank our sponsors and the Sheikh uh, for uh, sharing this uh, moment uh, with me. Um, on a personal note, this is a continuation of my own Hijra. Uh, when I became a Muslim uh, about just over five years ago, I lost everything I had at the age of 55, 56. I had to leave a place I thought was my home that I built with my life savings and uh, come to KL with the suitcase and my knowledge. That's all I had and my, my Islam. And what I found here was not the Islam I read about. The books, not the whole thing. So I, this is part of my history. Um, I began work then uh, to write what I have written. I had been actually studying these things for a number of years, but I hadn't written. And so I began the writing, and uh, from uh, being an unknown uh, entity, uh, a white foreigner who's actually your enemy, you know, in your, and people ask me, who's the, who's the enemy? I say, it's a white man. You were the white man. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, be careful. I know, I'm a white man. Okay. Um, this Judeo-Christian alliance has covered their heart. That's why you have good Christian kids dropping bombs on innocent women and children all over the world. And they've been doing it for a long time. And they're white people. They're not here to help you. Right? And if they do say they're here to help you, check them out like I've been checked out. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, examine them. Put them through the mill. Don't let them get off easy. Oh, you know, you know, I've been put through the mill. So this has been a great opportunity for me. And I just want to say one thing about a follow-up seminar. I think that this would be a wonderful event uh, to initiate something of this nature on an ongoing basis because uh, People like yourself, you just represent the tip of an iceberg. Okay. People like yourself need to know, and you need to see this uh, balancing act between 
uh, someone like myself who's brought up in a totally secular environment, okay, and the Sheikh who's been brought up in a completely different environment and has the traditional Islamic scholar, and the knowledge that comes with that. And you'll find out that the knowledge that I bring with me is somehow confirmed. You know? Not by him, but through him, and uh, it's confirmed by the Quran. By the, I can confirm it through the Judeo-Christian uh, traditions. I know what was in there. That's why when I read the Quran, it made a bigger impact on me than it would on somebody else, because I, I, I knew what came before. Okay? So when I read that book, I found myself halfway through the book weeping. Then I come across the, the, the verse that speaks about the man who's a true believer's weep, will weep when he reads this. And I had just started weeping. You can imagine what kind of effect that has on somebody like me, who had already, I practically rewrote Genesis in, in, some, of my, uh, in some of my works. So this is a, um, I would like to, if we continue this, and with God's permission and with the, the sheets of availability and myself, um, I would like to continue this, but on an invitation-only basis. I do not want to open this to the public, because once you open this to the public, uh, you open yourself to all sorts of harassment, which is unnecessary. Uh, this is a bit like uh, Lao Tzu, okay? The students who would harass him, he'd take a stick and beat them until they ran away and didn't come back. He'd tell them, don't come back. We don't need students like that. Sheikh Iman and I, we're getting on in years, and we don't need to waste our time with people who really don't want to learn. Well, if we're going to do this, we'll do this with a, uh, a group of individuals who are motivated, and a group of young people like, you. you're the next generation. We're, we're going to be gone soon. Yeah. You need to carry this on. You're going to be facing fires that we're only talking about. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام تبارك ربنا وتعالي تياذ الجلال والإكرام اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا التبعه هو الله kindly show us truth as truth Grant that we might recognize it as truth and follow it. And kindly remove the veils from off our eyes and show us falsehood as falsehood that we might recognize it and reject it. Allahumma arina al ashia akamahi. Allah kindly show us things as they are. We might not be deceived by what they appear to be. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad wa barik wa sallim Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yusifun wa salamun ala al-mursalin wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen Ameen Ilahi nastulil firdausi ala wa ala Tidak pula sanggup 
sana ragam dari itu kurniakanlah ampunan kepadaku ampunkanlah dosaku sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar Tuhanku aku tidak layak untuk syurgamu tetapi aku tidak pula sanggup menanggung siksa nerakamu Dari itu kurniakanlah ampunan kepadaku Ampunkanlah dosaku Sesungguhnya engkau lah pengampun dosa-dosa besar Allah fahab li tawbah tawwafir